Welcome back to another episode of Rock Boys Football. Billy Napier, the Florida Gators, kicking off their spring game this Saturday afternoon. And I want to take a deep dive into this Florida Gators roster and talk about some storylines and some questions that we want to see answered from this program heading into 2024 when you have the amount of young talent that Florida has and the amount of transfers that they've brought in, that would make that's what makes up a very exciting spring game. I'm fired up for this one. We're going to hop on right after the game and talk about what we saw. Excited to get into it. Before we do, and as always, just want to say thank you to you guys. A massive shout out to the Florida Gator fans. The amount of support y'all continue to show to the fellas truly does mean a lot. If y'all do enjoy the content, consider subscribing to the channel and much more importantly would love to hear some of your question marks and some of the things that you are looking for from this florida gators program in the comment section we'll chop it up there and without further ado let's get into this one and i want to start with i mean probably the biggest question mark that we have for this florida gators program heading into the 2024 season, and that is the downfield passing attack. Now, Billy Napier has kind of talked about a lot of the stuff that we've talked about and you guys have shouted out in the comments section, and that is this Florida Gators program in those short intermediate route concepts was an extremely efficient passing attack. You look at Graham Merce, completion percentage, extremely high, took care of the football. The biggest thing that was missing from this Florida Gators offense was really that explosive passing attack in terms of pushing the ball down the field. And there were two things that a lot of you guys have kind of commented in the comment section that we've talked about that Billy Napier has even talked about that kind of stopped Florida from really attacking downfield in that passing attack. I think the number one thing was pass protection, right? When you talk about, all right, we want to attack 20 plus yards down the field, really make teams fear what we can do attacking that deeper third. You got to keep the quarterback clean for those routes to develop downfield. We all know that was a massive problem for this Florida Gators program. So I want to start with the offensive line specifically at that offensive tackle spot. And you look at last year, you fast for you rewind 12 months ago. I mean, this was a Florida Gators offensive tackle room that was decimated with injuries and really just had no depth, right? Damian George was kind of forced to play that tackle position when we all knew it didn't take a rocket scientist to kind of see that he was not suited to play tackle in the SEC. You look at this Florida Gators offensive line room, specifically that tackle position, you feel a little bit better about the depth and the amount of bodies and capable bodies that the Florida Gators have, right? Austin Barber not participating in spring, but we kind of have a feeling that we know what he is as an SEC player. He's a guy that's solid. Then you bring in a guy like Devin Manuel, who Many of you guys know I'm extremely excited about because I think he offers a very high ceiling for this Florida Gators team at that tackle spot. Played the last couple of weeks for Arkansas in that 2023 season. Played some damn good football. Was a guy that got a lot of buzz during Arkansas spring practice 12 months ago. I'm excited to see what he looks like for this Florida Gators program. You have a guy in Brendan Crenshaw Dixon who I think we're all kind of penciling in as that starter at that right tackle spot, a guy that was nails for San Diego State the last couple of years. And then a guy that we haven't necessarily talked a ton about. We kind of focused on Austin Barber, Devin Manuel, Brandon Crenshaw Dixon. I'll throw one more tackle out that I'm really excited to see where we're at in spring practice with. And that is the true freshman early enrollee, Fletcher Westfall. And now the reason we haven't talked about him a ton during spring practice is I'm not a big guy that bangs the table for true freshman offensive tackles to start at the SEC level. Normally at that position, you need a year or two of seasoning. Fletcher Westfall is a really interesting cat though, because you take a look at the physical traits that he has. He's a guy that's physically ready to step on a football field and play some high level football, right? 81 inch wingspan, 6'8", 335 pounds. From a physical trait standpoint, this is a guy that we know can play. Now, how well is that development coming? That's the big question. We're going to get some answers from that during spring practice. Excited to see what Fletcher Westfall brings to the table for this Florida Gators program. Now, the second question that we have in terms of this Florida Gators program pushing the ball down the field, what is, I mean, what wide receivers are going to represent that down the field threat? You look at a guy like Eugene Wilson, 
He thrives in those short, intermediate route concepts where he gets the football in his hands and he can be explosive. A guy that can create separation quickly in his route tree, you want to be able to create space for a guy like Eugene Wilson to work the middle of the field, to work those short, intermediate route trees. The best way to create that space is to have a wide receiver that makes defenses respect what he can do down the field. Now, the wide receiver that I'm really in on and another guy that I think kind of just gets slept on. We like to, especially on this this channel, we like to talk about the young cats that we've covered on the recruiting trail. Tremir DK coming over from Wisconsin is not necessarily the flashiest wide receiver that was available in the transfer portal, but I do think he fits exactly what Florida wanted in that wide receiver room heading into 2024. This is a guy that's averaged over 15 yards per catch, has tremendous chemistry with Graham Mertz, and you're even hearing some buzz that he's really making it happen during those spring practices. Can Shamir DK be that guy that can really work down the field in this Florida Gators offense? And if we see both of those boxes checked in terms of the pass protection, taking a step in the right direction, and then at the wide receiver position, we see some names that emerge that can win down the field. If you're a Florida fan, there's a lot of reason to see this offense taking a massive step in 2024. Last position I want to talk about just briefly is the running back room. Not took some heat for being critical of this running back room in terms of the depth that we have. And it wasn't necessarily being critical as much as we just have some question marks about it, right? Montreal Johnson, really the only proven running back at the SCC level in this running back room. What does Webb look like? What does Conan Daniels look like as an early and early true freshman? My eyes are going to be on some of the young running backs, even a guy like Cam Carroll, just to get a sense of what does the depth look like in this running back room for the Florida Gators? Those are some of the storylines for me on the offensive side of the football. Now, going to the defense, my eyes are going to be on the defensive line. This is a unit that has really struggled in the past with depth on the defensive line. They've had some good players, right? A guy like Garon Dexter, I mean, dominant in 2022. You look at what the fatal flaw was for that Florida Gators program. The depth behind him was just not good enough. He was forced to play way too many snaps in 2022. This is the deepest this Florida defensive line has been since Billy Napier has gotten here. Cam Jackson, Caleb Banks coming back. Tyreek Sapp played some solid football. Want to shout out some guys that... I'm kind of excited for and kind of get a feel for where they're at in the spring game. First is Joey Slackman. This is a guy coming from Penn, extremely impressive career at the Ivy League level and a guy that, I mean, almost every Power 5 team in the country wanted to add in the transfer portal. The Florida Gators were able to get that one done. That was, in my mind, massive for Florida in terms of, I think, one, he's a starting caliber defensive lineman, but more importantly, some really nice depth and athleticism on the inside of that defensive line. Another guy that I'm taking a look at is Kelby Collins, who apparently is going to play a little bit more on the inside this year. This is a guy that many of you guys know I'm extremely excited about. Loved him coming out of high school. What does he look like playing on the inside? Is he physically kind of there in terms of holding up at the point of attack. And then the last guy we got to talk about is the early enrollee five-star in LJ McCray. And I think you look at not only some veteran guys like Cam Jackson, like Caleb Banks, like Joey Slackman, but then you sprinkle in the young talent that has super high ceilings for this Florida Gators program, the Kelby Collins is the LJ McCrays, the TJ Searcy's. I mean, that's kind of how you want a position group to look like. And I think the big question we have is, all right, what is that young talent, the new faces, how do they look at the SEC level for this Florida Gators program? You go back to the linebacker spot, I think Shamar James not going to be healthy and playing. Paul Howard, I mean, this is a guy that I've been banging the table for. You combine him with Ron Roberts coaching these linebackers. I've been very vocal that I think the linebacker ceiling is extremely high. You sprinkle in a guy like Miles Graham. I am really excited about the young athletic linebackers that this Florida Gators program has. And I mean, for guys like Pup Howard, Miles Graham, we're going to get a sense of where they're at in their development, in their young careers. And then you move to the defensive, the, the, the back end of the defense, the secondary. I think the biggest question that you have is how does this staff put together the puzzle, right? We have a lot of pieces that you can put in a lot of different places. How does this puzzle come together for this Florida Gators program? You talk about guys like DJ Douglas, like Triquez Bridges, 
like Asa Turner. I mean, does DJ Douglas work in the box? Does he work as that star? Where's TriQuest Bridge is going to be slotted in? We've heard a lot of different chatter about a lot of different guys playing different positions. My focus on the back end is, one, these new faces – where are they slotted in? I think the second question is what does the development look like of Bryce Stewart and Jordan Castell, two guys that when you look at Florida over the next couple of years might have some of the best safety play, not only in the SEC, but in the country with those two guys. And then Devin Moore, Jason Marshall, Jakeem Jackson. What does that cornerback room look like? I know that's a position that a lot of Florida fans think should be addressed in the transfer portal. I think we'll get a better feel whether they should add in the transfer portal after Saturday spring game. Those are some of the big questions that I have for this Florida Gators program. I am fired up for this one. We'll hop on immediately after the game, break down what we saw. Again, appreciate you guys rocking with the fellas. Can't thank y'all enough for all the support you guys have shown the boys. If y'all do enjoy the content, consider subscribing to the channel, and we'll talk to y'all later.